can you still remember this story in the book of John chapter 9? Can you give me John chapter 9? And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from birth. Okay? And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? It means his apostles, they were going through training. And Jesus must have told them that his own personal sin can be the problem. His parents' sin can be the problem. So they now found a man born blind. So now, all right, who is the sinning party in this matter? Is it the man himself? Or what? His parents. Next verse. Jesus answered, Neither had this man seen nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. The word works there is the glory. That the glory of God be made manifest in him. And what Jesus was saying was, All right, when I was in the studio creating people, what's your name? Uh, okay, that name she mentioned is her name. <laughs> when Jesus was in the studio making people, when I showed up, he gave me eyes from the studio. When Kadima showed up, she, he gave her eyes. When this guy showed up, Jesus refused to give him eyes deliberately. And the reason why Jesus refused to give him eyes was because Jesus knew that this man was going to be on earth when he himself would be around physically. So he chose that he would give the man eyes in time. Right? Notice it was not a matter of sin. He said, so that the glory of God can be manifest. There are some circumstances that God puts in place. And what he wants to get from it is what? Glory. And initially those circumstances look like challenges. They look like situations that you will not choose if you were given an opportunity all right but wrapped in it is is a pathway through which god can receive glory and it was because of that man's blindness that okay meanwhile the way jesus gave the guy his eyes is the same way he gave us eyes in the studio he spat on the ground made some stuff out of it and he created the eyes. He modeled it. He modeled it and asked the man to go and wash the excess. The moment the man washed the excess of dust, his own eyes were fitted into him in time. Do you realize that because of that miracle that took place, so many people will follow Jesus? It's because he manifested his glory. Many people, many of us, only see ourselves. I was abused when I was five. What about, yes, you were abused. And there are so many people that were abused. What about yielding to the Holy Spirit and he raises you up from that mess? And then you become an agent of God that has the skills of administering care to people that were in the same, that are in the same circumstances. Most of us die with the blindness. And we never give God the opportunity to earn some glory from the matter. You just make the whole thing look like it is you that is the subject. Meanwhile, God wants to be what? So yes, an armed robber visited. And when he broke into the city room, he, he, his, his intention to steal goods died when he saw your beauty. A different vision. He captured a different vision. So I was raped. That's the story. And there are many people in that category. But the difference between you and the other people is that you are born again. And God is hoping that some glory will come out of that situation. That the lady that was raped is now the first lady of our state. So she has a heart for such vulnerable people and a different line of ministry opens just because somebody was raped. 
But people in church today, those the the person sees that rape as as hey, oh. anytime we are praying in church, when you see the person crying, it's not that the Holy Ghost is working, it's the person is com- the rape issue. It's the issue. There is some glory involved. Please help me tell your neighbor there is some some glory. Some glory is involved. So what you call the worst thing that ever happened to you is a platform for God to reap some glory. It doesn't end with you. It ends with God. It may have started with you when you were not given eyes from the studio, but Jesus wants to get some glory. Kingdom of God is the manifestation of the will of God and the glory of God. So what happened to you? Your being raped was not the will of God. But if you align with God and the economy of God is powered by a spirit being and the implication of that is you cannot be disadvantaged if you walk with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter your deficiencies before you knew him, he will turn your deficiencies, turn your weaknesses, turn your feelings around and make it a miracle, make it a platform for service delivery. That's one thing about the Holy Ghost. So it doesn't matter how you started. You started as, as, as someone that was raped. Welcome. The Holy Spirit, if you yield to him, he's able to bring out beauty in the place of ashes. He is able to bring out the oil of joy in the place of mourning. He is able to bring out the garment of praise in the place of the spirit of heaviness. He is able to do that. It doesn't matter how you start. Don't dwell on, on your entry point. Dwell on the Holy Ghost. And at the end of the day, you will see that a garment of praise will be forged out of rape. It is only the spirit that can tell the story of redemption. How rape translates to a ministry. How the poverty that you inherited from your ancestors in your family, because it's a long line of poor men. The poverty made you run to God. Say, God, you see, I'm not worth anything, so I dash you myself. And then God now receives you. And the spirit begins to walk something out of your life. And because of the dramatic changes that manifest because you were handed out to the Holy Ghost, people in that clan will say, wow. Because they've said it to me, said it about me, to other people in my own family, that that man knows the way, follow him. Do you know how many people are looking for the way? And God is hoping to be glorified through your circumstance. Don't dwell on it as, 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 you know, no, 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 no. It can be your entry point. That's why you came. No problem. But you see, you will be deposited into the economy managed by the Holy Ghost. And a spirit, when you are dealing with this all-sufficient spirit, you cannot be disadvantaged. Your rape can become a ministry. Your poverty can become the reason why God decides to raise a mighty man from the platform. It doesn't matter how you come. The administrator of this economy can make anything come out of nothing. So there's nothing unique about your experience, unique about your story, unique about uh, what happened to you. What about what happened to Jesus on the cross? So many possibilities can be drawn from that. Hallelujah. We have, we have seen people, ministers of the gospel, they were murderers, they were armed robbers before. And God made a man that was so tender and compassionate out of an armed robber. And when something goes wrong, the man is already crying. He's broken right now. He's falling on the ground in intercession. Oh, the rest of us will be praying, our eyes are open. He's slain. Crying, weeping for hours. How, how does God make a former arm robber such a man? Nobody can tell that story. That's the story of redemption. How life can come out of death. There is some glory that God is hoping to draw out of this. Don't dwell in, in your challenge, in the things people did to you, how they took advantage of you. Wake up, you have a spirit. And I'm determined, I'm determined that, 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 that you will turn out in glory. 
You will turn out what? Someone made a little money in my family, and if you want to go get some money for school, there's an Ezemo in one of the rooms there. He will direct you to go and receive the blessing of the Ezemo before he gives you money. So those of us that had conviction and knew that this was slave trade, that even your children will suffer from that level of allegiance, we say, no! Drove us. And when I passed through Makode Bridge, I vowed I will never go in search of money again. If I die, I die. And God was waiting for me to get to that point. So that if, thereafter, if anything happens, I will know that it is him. May your, may you, may your poverty lead you to Jesus. Yeah. Not to your uncle. May your lack lead you to Jesus. May that rape lead you to Jesus. May that that oh my god that situation may may it lead you to jesus and i challenge you i promise you what will come out will be glory glory history was made when the woman in this city that went to my mother to tell her that i was not attending school that i have dropped out i'm preaching on the street now preaching salvation my mother didn't believe i was in the university she believed that I was just taking money to go and stay somewhere. And then when people come back, I follow them to come back. Until I showed her my discharge certificate from NYSE. Because she believed that even certificates can be forged. Showed her discharge. It came to pass on my birthday. The one they surprised me with. As I was going out, she was begging for prayer. The same useless man that is not going to school that is preaching on the street. You speak too early. Allow the glory to come out. The, that story that Jesus has been incubating, let it mature. You are too weak. A little pressure will begin to remember how you were raped. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up! May your poverty lead you to Jesus. May the rape lead you to Jesus. And he will weave out of your life a story of glory. Because if glory has not yet come, it means he's still walking. No devil, no demon can stop the outcome of that story. If you yourself decide not to yield, I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm going to walk with the Holy Ghost. And nothing is going to change the course of my life. I'm, I'm stuck with Jesus in a common union. He will make glory come out of that ashes. The oil of joy for mourning, the Bible says. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness. The plantings of the Lord. That he might be glorified. The plantings of the Lord. The plantings of the Lord. That he might be glorified. I preached, finished preaching somewhere and some people arranged a, a, a jet. They say, all right, we are taking you to Makodi. That was the first time I flew over the city. Oh, Jesus. My last coming to Makodi was not by road. It was... And you know what? Philip B, my, my son, also enjoyed it. He <laughs> flew over. My God. It was when I saw the new bridge. I said, oh, this is how. I began to pray in tongues because I saw the river. I said, hey! <laughs> And you know what? This morning I woke up and I saw there are texts that if you are going here, here, and here, we are coming to. Coming to lift you. Somebody was coming to the hotel in Abuja to come for counsel. I said, I mean, my God, you have here. <laughs> Chief Donatus, when we were here praying 14 years ago, they thought we, we had missed our way. <laughs> They thought we missed our way. They said, the young men with that vision. Go and look for money.
Right there. 9 a.m. I was in town. People were still going to the hotel for counseling. <laughs> I, was, I was already in town. Flew over. I saw how my God it looked like. I released prayer on it. I said, Kai! Anything in you will hear my voice. Anything. <laughs> Uh, uh. Meanwhile, we were here 14 years ago. They thought we were refugees. There's, there's, there's a beauty. There's a beauty he's weaving out of that situation. There's a beauty that is going to come out of it. There's a beauty. Just surrender to the Holy Ghost and allow Him weave His beauty into that situation and that situation will become a ministry it will yield a ministry when the glory of god has accomplished his full intent in your life blew over i said okay this is how my body looks like spoke to river i said Hallelujah. Whoever, who knew? Who knew that? <laughs> ah, there's a story of glory. And we're going to pray. And as we pray, let your heart pray. Because my case will end in glory. My case will end in glory. The one that gives eyes in the studio decided to come into time to give this man eyes so that he will be glorified. Your case will not end. Your story will not end until God's glory is fully manifest. It will not end. It will not end. Mando rokosi, mande brokotolia, is kamahai to kombe ramasika. There is a glory he is weaving out. Your beauty is going to come out of those ashes. The oil of joy is going to emerge out of your mourning. The garment of praise. Is going to find expression out of the spirit of heaviness. You will be called the plantings of the Lord that He might be glorified. For he is worthy of our prayer. You were born sickle cell in your genotype. He will change the story to glory. Just allow the Holy Ghost. Allow the Holy Ghost to the Lord. <laughs> and no man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory.